morning, everyone. Focus. We have a Lexus ES330. We're gonna put a radio on it today. Doesn't that sound exciting? Yay. Let's go take a look at the dash. We got some stuff we need to talk about. So this is an 05, and obviously it's a bit out of date. You know, why not update it? Now they have two dashes in this car, depending on what you're trying to do. But as the factory navigation like this one, you just need the standard little Toyota wingies that go to the right and left side of the radio to make it wider. It's the right height. Now, if you have the, the full big dash without this cool navigation, Metro does make a dash kit for it. It's the 998158G, and that's the whole center dash. And the only reason why I bring this up is because this dash, obviously we don't need it, and it just comes with a bag of, of little wings, and there's really no instructions for this because you, you don't need them. They're universal kits, so the universal kits don't always come with all the instructions. If you have this dash and you're like, I don't get the radio out. No problem. What you want to do is go look at Metra for the, this this kit. And when you're on the Metra page, you know, here's here's the kit. Down here on the bottom it says manual. Not manual, manual. Anyways, you click on it. Now what that's going to do is that's going to give you, scroll down, the instructions on how to remove this radio. They have those for all their cars. So you can go and check there to see, one, is there a dedicated dash kit, and two, if there is, how do I get it out? So this is a great tip anytime you need to remove the dash. So let's say you're gonna do a couple things where you need to get the radio out. Maybe an FM modulator, maybe you're gonna do a, a four channel high level to low level adapter or something like that. And you're looking at that dash going, I wonder how to get that out. MetroOnline.com, it's a great resource four manuals as far as like how to get dashes apart. Just put that one in your back pocket to keep in case you, you're stumped one day. The plan is this, we're gonna get this radio out obviously. So this customer was in a previous week, I don't know when, we did his wife's car. They like this radio here, the new MVH 2300 NEX. We're gonna use the cool RP4.2 TY11 to install the radio in the dash, retain the steering wheel controls and integrate with factory amplifier. And then if you were just wondering what those wingies are, it's this guy right here, the 958202. See, I just called wingies because they're just little pieces. First, what we want to do is get that radio out of the dash so we can match up our harnesses. We want to make sure we at least have the right harnesses. It's always a good thing to do. So let's get into the car, get that dash out. So we got the radio out of the dash. We'll go ahead and take that apart in a minute. What we want to do now is go ahead and get this out of the box and figure out which one of the many harnesses we're going to be using in this car. As you can see, it's, it's got a lot of harnesses. What we like to do, take our Sharpie, get this into the car, and we're going to go ahead and mark up which harness we're actually going to use. Go ahead and plug everything in that we have. So out of all these harnesses, we're just going to be using these two here. So let's get it over the bench and we'll remove all the other ones. Go ahead and spread this out. Take a look at what we have. You can go ahead and just plug this in, plug in the brain, and, and be done with it. You don't you don't have to do anything to the harness if you don't want to. It's it's totally not necessary. The only thing is, is, is for me, I like to not do that. It's more of a personal preference than anything. I like to pull all this stuff off. In the end, it just, it looks nicer. And I know the customer will never see it, but more of a peace of mind. Now the thing with this wiring harness is that there's a ton of T's, meaning that they come into this and go out to that and come into this and go out to that. It's eliminating those that is what we're trying to do here. First thing is you want to start, oh, missed one. Start with the easiest. Like in this case, this is the rear speaker output. This is going to be the easiest. We're going to go ahead and just remove this first. Now we're not going to need this harness here. We have the car side of the harness done. As you can see, this is a lot more manageable than the big wiring harness. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and grab the brain itself, and it has this cool dip switch section here, which is for the steering wheel control. So like always, we wanna go ahead and set that first. So we'll open our book up to page two, and it's a Pioneer, so we want one, two, and three on. Now we're gonna go ahead and put a little piece of tape over it so that it doesn't get bumped in the dash. And now we can go ahead and plug in our harnesses. 
you have two options non amplified amplified this obviously has an amplified system this has an amplified system so we're going to plug it into there now we'll go ahead and grab our secondary harness and we'll remove all the tape off of that so the red accessory is a little short so we're going to go ahead and add some into that now what we want to do is kind of go through this and figure out the wires we're going to use and not use. The first one off in the chopping block is the blue yellow. This is the steering wheel control for the JVC Kenwood. We're obviously putting in a Pioneer so we won't need it. We have all our standard speaker wire colors here so we'll go ahead and separate those out. We're going to need those. We're going to need the orange illumination so we'll go ahead and grab that. We're going to need the amplifier turn on wire which is the blue white so we'll grab that. Now what that leaves us with is a brown, a purple white, a light green and a pink. Now the light green is the emergency brake wire. We're going to do a bypass on this so we're not going to need that. The pink is VSS or vehicle speed sense. We're not going to need that. The brown on the owner's manual says not used. And the only wire that leaves us is the purple white, which is the reverse trigger. We're not doing a backup camera, but we'll go ahead and hook that up anyways. This has a yellow, black, and a red, which we're going to need. And then we also have this guy here, which is the analog remote turn on wire. So we essentially have two remote turn on wires. So let's go ahead now and get everything hooked up to the aftermarket radio. All right, so now we have the completed harness. We have our Pioneer plug on one end. This is the steering wheel control. We have our Toyotas on this end. It's a lot more manageable. To me, this looks a lot nicer. It's up to you as far as you want to go through the heartache to do all this. But now that this is done, we're going to get this into the car, plug this in. We just have the dash kit to build real quick, and then we're going to get this thing out of here. The radio's mounted in place, all set, ready to go. Let's get into the car. Track. Okay, hit the mode. I'm more worried about the phone button. I hit it. Oh, very good. Turn off Perfect. the lights. Perfect. Turn off the lights. You're good. All right, so we're done testing this. Everything that needs to work works. So now it's just screwed into the dash. All right, this one is done. On to the next one. Oh. Oh, what didn't make it out into the trash can? Why? Whatever that is. Sometimes when you get ready to do something, you just scratch your head and go, Okay, we have a Jetta. The reason why I'm scratching my head is because I realize this radio is a nice radio. It's an inexpensive radio. It's this guy right here, Pioneer 150 MP. We're putting it in this car. And there again, I, I, I don't know why. I, Cause I can tell you the smart harness, dash kit, and amplified antenna adapter cost way more than the radio. But hey, to each his own. Let's go in the car and take a look. All right. Need a coffee? Got his emergency bottle of water. We have a dash. We have a video that shows you how to get this radio out of the dash. So we're not going to really talk about it much. If you wanted to know that, we'll, you can go watch that video. But I can just tell you right now that this is like peeling an egg. This is all very fragile. That's okay. It's how the day goes sometimes. Without further ado, put a radio. Yeah. Beautiful one and fifty ampere. Yeah. Could you just say on to the next one? <laughs> on to the next one. You know, some days just don't make any sense at all. None. So we just did the 150 MP. Yeah. Believe it or not, there's a new version of the 150 MP. <laughs> it's called this guy right here, the DEHS 100 UB. 1000. Yeah, what he said. What we have here is this Infinity. This is a weird SUV. Apparently it's built off of the path, path uh, apparently it's built off of the Pathfinder. Let's take a look at the dash. So this is what we got. We have this Bose system here. We're gonna go ahead and take this out. Uh, I'm guessing they just want USB and AUX would be the logical conclusion of why we're just doing the minimum amount necessary. So pull this, pull this. I think there's some screws behind here and let's get started. The air conditioner, make sure it works. All right, another one bites the dust. 
On to the next one. Hopefully it's not another radio. Next up on the list, this is a G37. G37. Finally, we're not doing a radio. What we are doing is an amplifier install. So what this guy would like to have done to his car is this right here. He's going with a kicker L712. It's going to be in that Rhino lined box there. There's already a woofer in it. The wrong ohm load, so we have to switch those out. But we've already got the car apart. And the reason why we did that is because we want to talk more about that as opposed to you watching us take the car apart. So you can see the running boards are off. Now let's go up underneath the hood here. If you've got a G37, G35, 350Z, 370Z, as you guys know, they're pretty much all the same cars. At least this portion of the car here is the same. This guy, this right here. This is the grommet into the car. It's not over there, it's right here. What you do is, we'll, we'll show in a little bit, is this is where you come through for the power wire, right here. The other thing is this has a premium sound system. Let's take a look here in the rear package tray. So up on the rear package tray here, we have a couple different things. Like this is the main Bose amplifier here. This is the Bose amplifier just for this subwoofer. That's all this does. This doesn't, this just has a line level output going into this amplifier here. What makes this cool is that this has a variable voltage input coming into it for signals. So when you turn up and down the volume, it turns up and down here. It also has a remote turn on. So we don't even need to use any form of line level adapter or anything. We literally tap into here for remote turn on, solder on an RCA, and we're done. Now the question is, how do you figure out what is what? That would be key. So looking at this plug right here, this looks like a rear speaker plug that Nissan uses for behind the radio. The difference is, is there's two lines, two grooves here and here that aren't in this. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and trim those off. And once we get those off we can plug this in i don't know which plug this is off the top of my head i'll put i'll put it right here it's 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 right here all right so now how do we figure out what these wires are so we know what to hook up to our amplifier for this we're going to need a digital multimeter now what you want to do is grab yourself some paper and you want to write down all the colors that are in this harness then you want to grab your digital multimeter you want to set it to dc which is the v with the solid line with the dots beneath it now what we want to do is take our test probe here and we're going to test for the obvious things first and that would be power and ground so we know there has to be a power and ground in here because this is an amplifier Fire. So what we'll do is we'll take our ground probe and we'll just attach it to a piece of metal, which is ground. And then we'll go ahead and probe these to figure out which one is positive. So I'm gonna start with this brown here. And now my meter is showing 12 volts. So we know that the brown is positive 12 volts. We're gonna go ahead and write that on our piece of paper. Now we'll come over here and there's a black. I know, right? What are the odds of a black being a ground? And we'll test that. There we go, we get our voltage. Now these two are also the fatter wires in the harness, which is usually a dead giveaway for that. We'll mark that ground. Now we have three wires left. If we come down here and we remove this, what we'll probably find, and haha, we do, is this guy right here. See how this is a solid right here and it comes down and goes to this blue purple? This is what most manufacturers do when they have an amplified system. Think of it as like an RCA that just comes out to speaker wires and plugs into here. So most of them are gonna have something that looks like this. So that's telling you that these blue and purple are your signal and that this gray here is your remote turn on. Now naturally, you wanna test it. So we'll go ahead and we'll plug in our red lead there. We'll go to our ground here and we'll go turn on the car and see if we get voltage. Stereo's on, there we go, we have 12 volts. So for sure now we know which one is the remote turn on, which is gray, so we'll go right next to gray remote. So back to the signal. We know that these are signal, but what we don't know is which one is ground and which one is power. So what we need to do is we need to feed a signal into this so that we can pop this speaker up or down to figure out which one of these wires is positive. Now what we've gone and done is depend these out of the plug. We've marked which one is blue and which one is purple. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug these back into the amplifier and then what we can do is send a pulse into this and move the speaker up or down and that'll tell us when we put the positive in which one, which one of these is positive or negative. Now we wanna make sure we keep these separate so they don't touch. We'll go ahead and plug that in. We'll go ahead and turn it on. As you can see, we went ahead and stuck some wires into there. These are now touching the contact. And though we could use our PT9A, for this we're just gonna use a simple nine volt. So you guys can do this at home if you need to. Go ahead and put this on the positive side of the nine volt and we'll tap the negative. All right, so now we see that the woofer is moving down. We'll go ahead and switch the two. 
All right, so the woofer is moving up. So that means that the black here is in our positive. So we'll go ahead and unplug this guy here. All right, so black is where the blue goes. So we'll go ahead and pull that out. We'll slide our blue into it and we'll slide our purple back into there. So now we know, we'll write down on our sheet that blue is positive, purple is negative. And we'll put our plug back together. We know what our remote is, is gray. Power and ground, we're not gonna use. And then our signal, the blue is positive, purple is negative. Now on our harness here, here, it does have a remote turn on wire here and it has a couple speaker wires and if we plug these in here nothing is where we really want it so we're gonna go ahead and take this to the bench reorganize these so that we can make our harness to plug into this and get it over to the amplifier that Fernando is prepping right now So when depending one of these, the first thing you want to do is just get this black part out here. Now keep in mind, you don't have to depend it. There's wires in the holes, so you can use those. You don't have to go this extra step if you don't want to, uh, especially if you don't have a depending tool because you don't want to destroy the plug. All right, so we'll go ahead and remove this guy here. So now that we have this all depinned, what we want to do is we'll go ahead and pull two of the speaker wires and the remote, and then we'll go back to the car and we'll plug them into the corresponding holes real quick. I'll be right back. So we're done there. Let's go ahead and put this black piece back in. This is what actually locks the harness together. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lengthen these out to about three feet. We're going to solder one of our scrap female RCA ends onto it. That way the RCA's Fernando's running up will just take a Y jack, a single male to do female and plug into the RCA's. And of course we'll lengthen out this remote turn on and then we'll insulate this whole thing up, make it a nice little umbilical cord. So we have our harness all made up. This can plug into the factory. This will be all set and ready for the amplifier. We're gonna mount the amp to the back of the like, seat area there, but we still wanna put a plastic panel there. So what we did is we drilled through, the, we put the panel where we want it, we drilled through the front. Now what we're doing is let's go inside the car here. We have the area that we drilled the screws through. These are where they poke through. So now what we did is we actually put rivets from the inside into the trunk. As you can see, there's the trunk. It's a bolt, so it'll screw in either, either way. So, but now we can put our panel on there, screw in into these two rivets here from the back side. That way now it's not just some pointy screw sticking through the back seat. So as we said, this is where we want to go through in the firewall. Now, to do that, we need to poke a hole through here. Now, what we like to use is this guy right here. This is a fiberglass eighth inch rod. The nice thing about this is for one, it's not particularly sharp, so it's not gonna like dig into any wiring, but it's made out of fiberglass. So if by any chance whatsoever, this was to pierce a wire or two wires or anything like that, God forbid, it's not metal. So it's not gonna short those two wires out. That's why we use this. What we want to do is help it out a little bit. So we want to cut a little slit there's a circle right right here and we want to go above that circle not through the circle because we have a four gauge that is going to be coming through this now you can go ahead and bend your fiberglass rod poke it through I'm gonna go into the car and stick my hand up underneath the dash and see if I can grab it I'm only about that far in not real far Okay. Perfect. So it does help to have a buddy to help you get it through because what you want to do is go into the car, you can reach up into the dash and you can actually feel the bundle and then you can feel where this is poking out and just kind of like move it with your finger as he pushes it down and it'll totally avoid the bundle. All right, so we snaked the wire up through the hole, real simple, just pulled right through. We did put a little bit of soap on the end of the wire. We've already stripped this one. We're gonna go ahead and get it put into our fuse holder. 
Now we want to make sure no water gets into this. So we want to pull the loom back. Don't don't put this stuff around the loom. This is 3M strip cock. It's a butyl based. It's like it's like Play-Doh, just sticky as hell. And what we want to do is we want to make like a U, bring the ends together, and we want to squish it all into this. It will adhere to this rubber boot. Perfect. It won't come off or anything like that. Just jam it into all the holes so it's nice and weather tight and the nice thing about this is that it will move so like as if this moves it's not going to break or do anything like that holds waterproof We can still see our fuse when we remove the battery panel. So the amplifier is mounted in place. We have our 10 gauge power wire coming off of it here. We can go ahead and pan out and we can see there's the L7 woofer right there. This is one of the new ones. You can tell the difference with the new one because the new one has this blue stitching. This one is done. Now on this one, we did use simpler things like we used the nine volt. We just used a volt ohm meter to do these things. Not everyone has all the tools that we have. We understand that. But if you would like to get yourself some of those tools, you want to head over to Dean and Fernando's tool drawer. That's D and F tool drawer.com. All right, guys, on to the next one.